The Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway, which is expected to begin commercial operations by June 2023, is a flagship project that synergizes China's Belt and Road Initiatives and Indonesia's Global Maritime Fulcrum Strategy. The Jakarta Bandung Line will be the first high speed railway in Southeast Asia with a designated speed of 350 km per hour, reducing the average commute time between both cities from 3 hours to 40 minutes, boosting economic competitiveness in regions along the route. The new line will revolutionize the local and visitor commute between Indonesia's bustling, chaotic capital of 32 million people and the colonial era West Javan city of Bandung with its 8 million residents and surrounding natural attractions. The train will have an operating maximum speed of 350 km per hour, with around 80 km of the line built on elevated viaducts to traverse urban areas and farmland. The planned launch date is June 2023 with further plans to extend the line east to Surabaya, which is currently a nine-hour journey from Jakarta. On the sidelines of the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indonesian President Joko Widodo watched over a video livestream as the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway sped through its first trial run between Tigalur Station and Casting Yard No. 4 in Antara, last November 21, 2022. Currently, according to KCIC, the Jakarta Bandung HSR construction is less than 80% complete, while the investment progress was at 90% as of last year. The construction of tunnels and bridges is almost completely done, at 95% completion. However, the construction of Padalarang Station, which is the meeting point between the HSR and feeder trains, is less than 15% complete. 11 pairs of high-speed electric multiple units EMUs, and one set of comprehensive testing bullet railcars will be shipped to Indonesia, which will lay a high-quality and solid foundation for the completion of the Jakarta Bandung HSR, as scheduled. The first batch of Chinese-made high-speed trains, customized for the Jakarta Bandung High-Speed Railway in Indonesia, will arrive in the Southeast Asian country by the end of this month, marking a milestone for China's bullet train industry. The remainder will be completed in batches by the beginning of 2023. Jakarta-based PT Karita Sipat Indonesia China, the project's prime contractor, the railway project is expected to be completed in June 2023, after eight years of construction started in 2015. The design speed of 350 km per hour will shorten the travel time between Jakarta and Bandung, the capital of Indonesia's West Java province, from more than three hours to about 40 minutes. The high-speed EMU and comprehensive test train that rolled off the production line were developed with the advanced and mature technology of the Chinese standard Fuxing EMU at 350 km per hour, and adapted to the local operating environment in a tropical and humid country like the rest of Southeast Asia. According to China Railway, the EMU for the Jakarta Bandung HSR is designed to be capable of carrying 601 passengers, with one first-class car, one dining car, and six second-class cars. The EMU used on the Jakarta Bandung HSR adopts intelligent sensing technology, and is equipped with earthquake monitoring and early warning systems. Through more than 2,500 detection points located along the whole train, all key systems can be monitored and assessed in real time. The EMU also adopts a high standard corrosion-resistant design, and advanced protection technology, making it more resistant to salt spray and ultraviolet radiation, including a fire monitoring system, an ACDC insulation monitoring system, the braking system, and an anti-vibration system. The train can achieve a safe start on a slope of 30 degrees. It also adopts a technology that can regenerate energy from the braking system, which is less carbon intensive and more energy efficient. Smart technology makes fire and smoke monitoring systems smarter. The fire detector is self-learning, and can continuously upgrade itself during operation to make the alarm information more accurate. All the Jakarta Bandung HSR tunnels have been completed, and more than 90% of the subgrade, bridge, and station civil works have been completed. Track laying began on the main line in July. On the main line, the length of the ballasted track section is 112.8 km and that of the ballast-less track section is 166.6 km, all of which use 50-meter rails produced in China. 
The Jakarta Bandung HSR is further proof that China's technology and standards for high-speed rail have now been recognized internationally. Indonesia expected a $5.5 billion construction cost after accepting the bid from China, where the host country does not require or assume any fiscal burden or debt guarantee in proceeding with the project. However, the project cost increases from $6 billion last January 2020 to $7.9 billion in 2022. The cost overrun is now shouldered by the Indonesian government in order to continue the project. Before China secured the project, Japan had proposed building a Shinkansen-style rail link from Jakarta to Banda. It was to cost 600 billion yen or around $6.2 billion, where 75% or 450 billion yen will be funded via 40-year official development assistance loans, with an annual interest of 0.1%. But Widodo chose the Chinese option, which promised to transfer of high-speed rail technology and kept Indonesia off the hook for any costs or debt repayment. No sovereign debt will be recorded, instead, the loan will be booked to the newly formed joint venture with a Chinese firm. The project was funded by a debt-to-equity ratio of 75% loans from the China Development Bank, and 25% startup capital from KCIC, a special-purpose joint venture in partnership with China Railway Group Limited and four Indonesian state-owned enterprises. The project financing from China Development Bank will cover for 40 years, on which 10 years grace period and 30 years of annual amortization with a 2% fixed interest rate. China's high-speed rail system spans different conditions, including extremely cold weather, frozen soil, mountainous areas, deserts, wet coastal areas, and tropical regions, providing rich experience in building high-speed railways worldwide, especially in Southeast Asia. As of the end of 2021, China's high-speed rail service exceeded 40,000 kilometers, accounting for more than two-thirds of the world's total high-speed rail length. Similar to high-speed railway services in China, which have effectively spurred business activities along rail networks, the Jakarta Bandung High-Speed Railway will enrich the development of infrastructure facilities and generate fresh growth points in both the services sector and trade in services in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. The 1,035 km Laos-China Railway linking the southwest China's city of Kunming, the capital of Yunnan province. With the Laotian capital of Vientiane, is another example of enhanced cooperation between China and countries participating in the BRI it has already expanded land-based trade between China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. The completion of the Laos-China Railway and Jakarta to Bandung High-Speed Railway is a testament to the success of China's Belt and Road Initiative in the region that will spur regional growth in Southeast Asia and China. This railway will take form an important part of the 5,500 km Trans-Asia Railways, which begins in Yunnan's provincial capital Kunming, and travels through Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Malaysia before ending in Singapore and eventually connected to Indonesia through maritime links in Sumatra and Java.